Go, I am so sick and tired of these lawsuits against Diddy. They just go ahead and arrest them. Go ahead and do it. We tired of talking about it. I'm tired of hearing it. Uh, you know, whew, all these lawsuits. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I, enough is enough. You know, people are abusing their power. You got, you got, uh, uh, Judge Fifi filing lawsuits and getting granted permanent injunctions without the other party being present and shit. You got a nigga in prison for 75 plus years, got a hundred million dollar lawsuit against Diddy. Now that's the gag. That the gag is for the judge to go back in chamber and say, girl, this man in here with all of this. He said Diddy graped him at a party. And they be like, oh, go ahead and grant it so we can just, you know, we can get in the lights and be on the TV and stuff. That's the only reason they granted the temporary restraining order. And then on top of that, the other judge colluded and said, we going to grant this knowing it's full of shit. They want Diddy to petition to be in their court so they can get them some clout juice and everything and gossip. Okay, at the golf clubs and shit, people is tired. I'm tired, tired, and more tired of all of this Diddy lawsuit. But let's go ahead. Shout out to Law and Crime Network. That's the only place I really go to get my law and crime information. They reported on this Diddy lawsuit, the lawsuit that Dunn filed against Diddy. Now, uh, I'm going to keep it a bean. This lawsuit done filed against Diddy. I'm like, what's the statute of limitation? New York State said y'all had until what? Uh, November, Thanksgiving last year. Y'all still coming out with the lawsuits done. If anybody, you should have been the first one to file a lawsuit. All that surgery he made you get. You don't even look like the same person. All the music videos and music and stuff you put out and you still ain't pop. Oh. Uh-huh. Diddy had you up there. He was Diana Ross and y'all was the Supremes. And now all of a sudden you want to file a lawsuit when this shit done died down. Girl, child, you doing too much. You want your name in the lights. You done finally realize that your music ain't hitting no nothing. You ain't never going to pop, be bigger than or anything. Or you the reason why Danny DeKay ain't going on the tour because you had to reach over there at... Uh, 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 Shannon with her salt You know Shannon don't fight it You reached over there And y'all couldn't go on tour That was your big moment Biggest moment Okay You got a good song or two here and there But girl whew, You reached the peak And now all of a sudden You want to go and collect the check And sue Diddy Probably under the same law That Cassie sued him under a workers, a worksman comp lawsuit. She sued as an employee of the company and all of this other stuff. So I guess that's what you trying to do as well. You should have been did it, girl. Oh. Sick of these lawsuits. Here it go. His legal issues don't seem to be going away anytime soon as he faces yet another lawsuit accusing him we of almost sexual done. abuse. But this lawsuit is coming from one of his former collaborators and former artists signed to his Bad Boy Records label. This week, former Danity Kane member Don Richards sued Diddy, accusing him of inhumane treatment and sexual assault. The suit adds another number to the growing amount of sexual misconduct lawsuits the hip hop mogul already faces. This time, it's Don Richard. Don Richard was previously a contestant on season three of Diddy's hit MTV show, Making the Band. According to court documents, during her time on the show, she witnessed different instances of verbal abuse by the hit maker. She claims Diddy referred to the contestants as fat, ugly, hoes, and used other harsh language. And once she was selected to be a part of the band that would eventually become Danity Kane, she alleges Diddy's contempt for women was rapidly apparent. She says the five-member all-girl group was regularly subjected to Diddy's harsh language, and he made several comments about their physical appearance. She names one example as Diddy referred to Richard as two. Look, y'all, people so sick of this. This video was released one day on Law & Crime Network with only 44,000 views. People is sick of this. Girl, you was tired and through and late. Skinny, and she needed to do something about this, referring <laughs> to her face. During her time in his orbit, she claims to have witnessed Diddy's alleged true colors firsthand. According to the suit, around 2005, Richard claimed she saw Diddy and Don was always Diddy's beautiful. Former partner, and she the didn't see it in herself. Kim Porter. She says she witnessed Porter in tears, leaving a music studio with bruises all over her face, including a lacerated lip. Richard said she realized then that Diddy was capable of committing acts of violence against women, and she feared Diddy could one day physically harm her as well. While signed with Diddy, she claims he forced her to work for Thank you, 48 she hours straight. And as a result of the straight. overwork, she lost a substantial amount of weight, became dehydrated, and even developed rashes. According to the suit, Richard... 48 hours straight? Sweetheart, you... you. <laughs> Let me tell you something. 
48 hours straight, you know how many actors be up rehearsing 48 hours straight before they film? That's usual. I mean, what I mean by 48 hours straight, I don't mean that they're rehearsing and actively, like they're getting sleep just cognitively. They're always on the clock. That's 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 the life of a celebrity, especially a celebrity that's doing a movie on tour. Cognitively, they are always on the clock. Some of them forget the clock out. Look what happened to Heath Ledger. Oh, Lord. But, you know, it's... She's not... I believe she was caught in Diddy's alleged web as he promised to advance her singing career if she caved into his demands. She says Diddy deprived her and her Danity Kane band members of basic needs like adequate food and sleep. When asked if she could get meals, Diddy refused and chastised them with comments like, you don't want this or ma'am you got the same story every celebrity got not just musicians but actors you got the same story why you think they just quit all american because this is what they was doing to them had them working non-stop y'all are not hungry for, enough and for dirt i'm cheap. paying you to work she says diddy demanded they record and rehearse for 36 to 48 hours without breaks according to the suit richard lost a significant amount of weight weighing in at about 100 pounds under the extreme conditions, which at the time she thought was a standard requirement to be in the group. The suit went on to state Diddy continued to- And look at her now. She's skinnier than she ever been. They gonna say, man, how much late you lost? I lost this much. Now, then how much did you weigh at the time? Oh, uh, after that, I wore 125, 130. How much you wear now? 110. Girl, get your old zip and take your ass oh, on so no. Assert his power and dominance, <laughs> and even insisted on holding meetings while dressed only in his underwear. She says, in one instance, while at his Miami home, did he? And you know, you're right. She is. Don has been hurt and broken a long time ago. I seen it from when 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 he said he fired all the girls and he was gonna keep Don in the contract. Don was broken already. It was just like to me. It's just like. She wants this dream so bad, so whatever broke her, she gonna stay there and take it. Ain't that what Cassie did for years? Kim Porter, other people. You know, it's a shame. This happened to so many different people. It really do. So I want to point that out. Richard directing her to meet him in the living room. She said when she arrived, he was only wearing his underwear. And when she asked him to put clothes on, the mogul refused and said, this is my effing house. Richard claims the meeting lasted around an hour. All while Diddy was in his underwear, leaving her feeling violated and embarrassed. By 2009, Danity Kane broke up, but Richard continued to work with Diddy, later forming a new group called Diddy Dirty Money. She says on the first day of recording under the new group, she and her bandmate Kalina Harper waited in the kitchen where Diddy's then girlfriend Cassandra Ventura. And, that, and Kalina said, keep her name out your mouth. I don't know why you mentioned me 33 times in your lawsuit. Um, and because you mentioned me, Diddy gonna pay me some money to keep clothes and I'm gonna op up against you and testify against you. Oh, Lord. That's what it sounds like to me. Not you naming some people in, in, in before name. You was better off naming Aubrey O'Day in your lawsuit instead of her. That lady said she finna get her money and go and see you later in the dust. Girl, you wanted to be famous. You want to be a star. You still look like you want to be forever 21. And now you got a lawsuit because you figured it was time to hang it up, huh? better known as Cassie, was frying eggs for him. According to the suit, she was initially introduced to Cassie around 2006, when she was first signed to Diddy's label. She claims even then, Diddy appeared to be fixated on Cassie, but in a predatory way. Years later, she claims to have witnessed more of the dark and true colors behind the mask. During the time Cassie was making eggs for him, Richard claimed she saw Diddy high on drugs go into the kitchen and approach Cassie and scream, I've been asking you for my, I can't stand you. You never do it right. She says Diddy pushed Cassie against the wall and choked her, then picked up the scalding hot pan of eggs and threw it at her, causing her to fall to the ground in a fetal position. While cursing and screaming, Diddy then allegedly dragged Cassie up the stairs. Richard says she was frozen in shock and terror, hearing glass shattering, crashing, and banging noises when Diddy dragged Cassie up the stairs. While she wanted to interfere, she was let out of the home. The following day, Richard said, There's, I, I don't, this is a grift. You hanging on to the, the threads of Cassie 
You know, it sounds like you suck cat. Did it make did, did it make you suck Cassie from the back or something done? Cause it's just like you sucking her pussy in this lawsuit. And we still ain't get to exactly what he did to you besides hurt your feelings and made you work hard for the fame that you want. That she received a call demanding she return to Diddy's home to continue recording. But when Diddy brought her and her bandmate into the recording room, he locked the door, dimmed the lights, and gave each of them flowers. According to the suit, Diddy went on at length saying, quote, This is normal. This is just a lover's argument where no one was hurt. This is what love is. I'm giving you an opportunity. If you want to make it, you'll shut your mouth. If you say anything, there will be consequences. He also threatened her with a warning saying people end up missing. Around November of 2009, after the Soul Train Awards, Diddy flew Don <laughs> Richard and Kalina Harper to his New York home for an after party. She claims at the party there were several celebrities there and copious amounts of illegal drugs. But also dozens of young women and girls, some of which appeared to be underage, be transported to the party. Richard says the women there were wearing little to no clothing and were given drugs and alcohol, and many of them appear to be lethargic or passed out, while Diddy and his guests performed sexual acts on them. Ooh. She says Diddy repeatedly said things like this. But my is thing is, why ain't nobody get on top of you and you ain't a direct victim? You saying you seen all of this. How was you sober enough to see all of this? What did you do? It to me it sounded like you participated in it too. You giving me a little ride syndrome, huh? You wanna wait to speak out all this time. It's been damn near a whole year. Come next month, it's finna be a whole year when Cassie filed that lawsuit and here you come. For what? For what? Like this don't even make no sense. It's it, then didn't, didn't they close the statute of limitations up? He sound like Tyler Perry busting, pe busting young people in and out to his house and studio. Buffet, enjoy yourselves. This is what we do. This is how we party. Richard says she begged Diddy's personal assistant, Capricorn Clark, to allow her to leave. But Clark told her to wait so she could orchestrate her departure, leaving Richard feeling trapped against her will. According to the suit, that was one of many instances of Diddy's alleged drug-fueled parties, where he and his guests would allegedly sexually violate women mm -mm. who were under the influence. The suit would go on to describe so I heard it all before. Diddy physically abusing his then-girlfriend Cassie. In the fall of 2009, while preparing for a festival in New York, she allegedly witnessed Diddy grab Cassie by the neck, pulling her out of the van onto the grass, pinning her head down, choking her while yelling, you're going to get effed up today. She says that incident took place in the backstage area just outside the festival and that it was entirely visible to passerbys. In another instance in 2010, Diddy allegedly punched Cassie in the face in the bathroom of a party in LA. And when Cassie tried to stand up to Diddy or even voice her opinion, he would hit her or wrap his hands around her throat and choke her. She claims she and Dirty Money bandmate Kalina Harper tried to get Cassie to leave Diddy. But when he found out about their conversation, the mogul threatened her, allegedly telling them, y'all don't get in my relationship. And went on to say, don't tell my what she needs to be doing. Just make money and shut the F up. I in artists. I shelve careers. You could be missing. You want to die today. Okay. You know what this giving? She keep on mentioning her bandmate and saying that her bandmate was present at the time when Diddy issued these threats. The girl that came out publicly and said, leave her name out of it. She ain't got nothing to do with it. So it sounds to me like Dunn probably talked to her about it. You know, instead of going to talk to Aubrey, a white woman who looked like a botched Karen, instead of her going to op up with Aubrey, who we all been knowing and been feeling like did it and did something to her, she go to the other bandmate that probably done called did and said, hey, done and called me. This is what she said. It won't, 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 won't. And did it like, yeah, we going to let her do that. And then we going to use you as a defense. So when she's saying that you was here at these times, you're going to testify and you're going to sign a declaration saying it's not true for some money. Some money. According to the suit, and the, the case going to be thrown out. Women entered an agreement with Interscope Records and their CEO, Jimmy Iovine, had clear knowledge that Combs was abusive and dangerous around women after Diddy allegedly punched Cassie in the stomach during a dinner where he was present. In addition to the abuse she witnessed, she says Diddy's treatment toward her only got worse. She claims Diddy once barged into her dressing room while she was naked mm. and inappropriately touched. And they say that Jane Doe is a is a UK troll suing Diddy. 
And we all over here in the frenzy about who the Jane Doe, who is it, who is it? We need to know who is it. He filing court papers, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars, and it's a UK troll child. Her breasts and butt. She says in another instance, the producer <laughs> locked her in a car with heavy tinted windows for crazy two hours as she screamed for help. Crazy. Even calling her dad to help her. She claims her dad traveled from Baltimore to New York to free his daughter and to confront Diddy, threatening to even go to the police. But according to Richard, Diddy told him, think about your daughter and think about your daughter's career. According to the suit, Richard suffered and continues to suffer loss of income, wages, benefits, royalties, and other compensation. She also suffered from emotional pain, PTSD, anxiety, insomnia, and is asking... So basically she's saying she was induced into a contract. Like I, I I get tired of these artists that get in these deals, get in these contracts, and then when you feel like that's it, here you go with the big kaboom. This is what you gotta do to make it, to be remembered forever and ever, or whatever the fuck that goes on in the head and shit. I just totally feel like this is the griff. I wish um she did this a lot earlier. I honestly don't care because she didn't do it a lot earlier. And she definitely reaped the benefits um, of being in Danny Kane. We still, I still, if I'm listening to Danny Kane, I go to her music, one or two songs, and that's it, yada yada. And then you dressing like you're beautiful with these glamorous editorial clothes on that nobody knows, nobody's seen, and you so special because you got on the clothes and you in California and you got out like. You know, I, I just feel like people are doing a little bit too much. This is a sad way to go out. About, this is a sad way to go out. Like, you know, when TLC came out with the shit with, you know, uh, niggas over in Atlanta, L.A. Reed and them, they kept going and they kept making music. You know, and I just feel like if you're going to come out against somebody, what's your backup plan or is this it for you? Cassie got her money. We ain't heard from her. Cassie gagging at y'all. Cassie gagging at everything. Because she 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 was in that situation and she got paid for not done saying the same thing. It's just, it's too late. Like, if you, lady, if you would have did this before Thanksgiving last year, you would have had a payout. What took you so long? What took your whole year to say, oh, this is what I got to do? You've been trying to put out music and stuff going bankrupt. Music ain't hitting no, ain't selling no nothing. Your body hurt forever. You look good, but all the plastic surgery. Now you want to say Diddy got Diddy made you do this, sweetheart. Your confidence was down until you got that surgery on your own. Okay, I really want to feel bad for her, but what I'm saying is I don't hear nothing directly and explicitly related to her that makes her a victim of anything other than how she felt. I don't hear any physical violence. I don't hear any credible threats. Um, in the in the anything closely to, you know, what happened here and what she witnessed and stuff about Cassie and shit, I, I I feel like she just, you know, what if the FBI wanted to use this other girl as a witness in the case and she put it in court records what she could testify for, so you interfering at this point. I, that's how I feel. I'm sorry. Put a one in the chat if you feel the same way. Well put a two in the chat if I'm tripping. Costs. I'm now joined by a great guest to break this down further, and that's attorney Richard Schoensee. Now, Rich, thanks for being here. Sean Combs, a.k.a. Diddy, is making headlines once again after being sued by a member of a group he used to manage, and that's singer Don Richard. She's accusing him of sexual assault and inhumane treatment. Does this lawsuit I haven't heard come as the a shock assault. to you at all? No, it doesn't come as a shock to me at all, because I think what you're seeing is... You know, a continuing stream now of legal proceedings against Combs. And this happens a sometimes when there's a powerful individual who nobody has gone after. And once that seal is kind of broken, you can see other people. We heard it's that not, before. It sort of reminds me of what happened. Like, we heard that before. Cassie did it. Oh, my gosh. We got to get it. Lil Rod did it. Oh my gosh. You know, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice. Fool, fool me three. You done. I just feel like you the you the third biggest fool me. We thought Aubrey was gonna do it. Here you go. It's just like I we done heard all this before. What what statute of limitations you operating under? They said you had until November the twenty fifth. Tyrone Blackburn finna be floating in the Hudson River. 
the attorney Audrey English got in Miami. She fin- she finna lose her license. And here you go. Who you got? What? Oh, everything I'm hearing them is about Cassie and what you seen. It's a grift. Off the bat, it sound like a grift. You know, what is you is you doing this because, you know, 50 Cent making a move and you had to get your story out there with this frivolous complaint? And uh, to Bill Cosby, you know, eventually there was a whole line of people who had <laughs> claims about his conduct. Look at what. That seems to be what we're seeing here, that maybe there were people who wouldn't have come public, who wouldn't have brought a lawsuit, and that that door has been opened. And Don Richard says, while a part of the group Danity Kane, she was subjected to verbal abuse, claiming Diddy called the girls fat and ugly. Going as or talking about a pattern, what does that say to you as far as a pattern goes of his behavior towards his artists? Because this was also previously echoed by another member of Danity Kane, Aubrey O'Day, who has been outspoken about Diddy's treatment of the group. What are your thoughts? Well, I, I mean, that kind of treatment is reprehensible. Uh, maybe even actionable in a technical legal sense if you are uh, demeaning members uh, of the people who work for you because of their weight, because of their gender. It's a little bit different in the entertainment industry, but I don't think you would have this kind of lawsuit on those allegations alone, right? We have other way more uh, provocative allegations about physical altercation, violence, threats of violence. That's what's really driving this lawsuit. And it's interesting, too, because Don Richard was a prominent collaborator with Diddy. What are your thoughts about that in terms of how far her credibility goes, where she has worked with him since Dan, or she previously worked with him in Danity Kane, then went off um, and collaborated with him some more. But in terms of what she saw during those time periods, what are your thoughts about that um, and how her credibility, how far her credibility can go? Right. It's a matter of credibility, I guess, mm. uh, potentially, but but it's also a defense strategy. You know, I can see the defense here saying that whatever she is talking about either was consensual or she played an active role in. Or right. She benefited from. She was willing benefited. to go along with it back when this was an ongoing right. enterprise. Right. Exactly. She was benefiting financially and she's, you know, changing her stance on it now at this late date. Uh, and I'm sure her story is going to be no this was always horrible treatment of me and I'm finally speaking out about it. And this lawsuit's also interesting in that Don Richard says she witnessed Diddy physically abuse his ex-girlfriend Cassie. She says she witnessed him throwing Cassie against the wall, choking her, dragging her up a flight of stairs, throwing a hot pan of eggs at her, which is just horrific. What are your thoughts and do you think these claims <laughs> can or will be held against him in terms of the reported federal investigation into him? Well, I'm, you know, it's, I don't know what's going on in the federal investigation. Obviously, we don't know what the investigators have investigated or found. They're certainly going to read this. I was pretty clear that they had read the Cassie lawsuit back when that was filed. I think that might have had a lot to do with what happened with the federal investigation, yes. and why we eventually saw charges. Right. The fact that that initial matter went to litigation before it At was At this settled. point, indict him. So, there's a question here, though. You know, this plaintiff we didn't throw him she away. saw him commit misconduct against others. That's not actually her claim. Her claim has to be based on misconduct of her, not what she witnessed. So there could be a fight as to whether those allegations are even relevant to the claims that are directly presented in this case. Exactly. But I think that fight's a long way off. Exactly. In terms of when it's this a grift. lawsuit maybe have come to fruition. When do you think that it was that Don Richard had that turning point and went to a lawyer with these claims? There is a lengthy list of defendants. She has seems to me like 20 defendants. Uh, it's a 55 page complaint. I think Diddy responded to this action, all of which is to say it wasn't written overnight. Um, it is thought out and detailed. It's brought by Lisa Bloom, who is a prominent lawyer for this kind of lawsuit. Right. So these people are serious. Uh, I don't know how long it was in the works. There's really no way to tell just from looking at it. But it wasn't a matter of days. It had to be a matter of weeks or months. And again, I'm sure that 
the plaintiff here was, I don't want to say motivated, but at least informed by Cassie's lawsuit right. and the prosecution, uh, perhaps paving the way for her to bring a lawsuit with her claims. So I don't know which one came first, except I know which ones were filed first, and this one is filed now. And Diddy has denied all the claims against him, as these lawsuits seemingly continue to mount against him. But while he's denied the allegations, we all saw the hotel surveillance video of him brutally beating Cassie. Do you expect another statement of denial? Maybe or maybe not. I mean, he might make a statement of denial. He might just choose not to comment on this. Uh, we did. I did see that video, as as I think we all did, and it's horrifying and reprehensible and indefensible, just what you watch in that video. Be interesting to see if there's any kind of video or audio or written evidence in this particular case. Which I'm telling I know how these people think. Powerful. But it's a different kind of relationship. He doesn't have the same kind of relationship with Don Richard that he had with Cassie. So it's a little bit of a right. different situation. And I'm still trying to figure out the essay. Because, you know, the way Dawn carried herself, I'm not saying this about her. And that's why I'm, I'm so glad that Danny DeCain had, you know, two dark-skinned black girls. See, Dawn was the insecure one that had all the talent and all the potential and just did not love herself. And you can see it written all over her. That's what we seen, and she she had to be super nice and sweet to blend in because it it compensated for her lack of sex appeal. But she could move and do it. We seen the potential. Diddy seen it. Everybody seen it. She's seen it. Today she looked like a chop shop. Did Diddy make her do that, <clears throat> or did she, as a dark skinned <clears throat> black girl, actually blend in with the group with the other black girl because they were so different? D Wood owned her sex appeal. We still think D. Wood is sexy. No surgery, no nothing like that. We loved it. She owned it straight up ATL. You was the insecure white black girl. Didn't know if you wanted to be Rihanna or whoever. Like, you know, and then all of a sudden when you started getting beautiful, that's when D. Wood was no longer necessary. That's why the group could continue. So um, I don't think niggas ain't want to hit done like that, honestly. And again, you know, they say Diddy came out and said, done, enjoy every bit of it. Oh, and I believe him. And I don't know if he's going to feel compelled to make a public statement about it. Also, because he's got these criminal matters against him, he probably doesn't want to make very many statements at all. And do you see Diddy settling this lawsuit by chance in the way that he may have or the way that he did with Cassie's lawsuit, which is the only one he settled so far? And if so, do you think that that could happen anytime soon? Well, it's interesting that the Cassie lawsuit really blew me away, because if I remember correctly, that was filed and settled the next day. Right. And what I said at the time is I don't understand how that happened. Usually with lawsuits like this, you send a draft to the defendants and you say, let's settle this or we're going to file the attached lawsuit, right. which is what I would have assumed Cassie did. And then the defendant, one of the reasons to settle is not to have those allegations. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think um, <sighs> that's how it usually works. I think Cassie glorified herself by playing the whistleblower and if you're gonna be a whistleblower you don't go and tell your job hey i'm finna go public with this information about you you just do it you talk to them or whatever they know what's up you know what's up especially a victim of survival. you i don't have to give you notice that i'm finna sue you for essaying me or graping me i don't have to give you notice of that it's not like defamation, like you said something and you can take the opportunity to take it back. You can't take back, violate my body. You can't, like, out of nowhere. That's like telling SA victims that 20 years later, they can't go to the police station and get Bill Cosby to get hammed up. I don't have to notify nobody. I think that Cassie chose not to do that. 
because she wanted the gates to be open. She wanted the public humiliation to happen. That was her ultimate get back. The money itself, definitely something needed, but come on. You, Cassie, your music career gone. Ain't nobody fucking with you. This nigga got your music, your whole album hostage in the shell of you and playing all the music that ain't nobody never heard of you at parties and shit, talking about how much he in love with you, crying like a little bitch when he just want to control you, have power over you, and got the next bitch coming up saying, this Cassie, you want to remake this song? I can give it to you. You know, sociopath, narcissist. So I don't think Cassie notified him, and I want to notify him either. He was shocked just like the whole world was shocked. That's why he got up looking like a fruit bat in the face with them panda eyes. Because sleep couldn't do nothing, stressed out everybody. Y'all know his uh, drug rule. Brandon got arrested in Florida. I'm going to do a little research and figure out what's going on with that case and bring that back to you guys, a whole video. Because uh, the feds can use him to... Oh, no. ...actions become public. So I was really surprised in the Cassie lawsuit that he let the allegations become public and then went ahead and settled it the next day. That timing was very odd to me. Um, could he settle with Dawn Richards? Sure. There's n no reason he couldn't offer her some amount of money and she might take it or not take it. Uh, at some point, though, if these lawsuits... She was better off opping up with Aubrey. Instead of that other girl that came after all this group and shit. No, she was better off with Aubrey. Which are going to keep coming. He can't write mm -hmm. a check every time they come. Especially right. if he's offering denials. So he's got to think through that overall strategy now. He doesn't have the option of settling these things before they become public, right? The, the, the horse has left the barn on this becoming public. It is now all out there. Right. We've heard the allegations. So the value of settling diminishes a little bit, and that becomes part of the consideration, too. And Diddy was a man whose name held a lot of power. While these are just allegations right now, do you see Diddy taking any accountability at this point? Can he take accountability at this point? I, I don't know. You know, these allegations um, from these women, and I and I gather others, are of really violent, reprehensible conduct. Right. And I don't know if he, at this point, can just offer, you know, I apologize no. and I'm going to go work on myself and be a better human being. I, I don't actually think that's going to cut it anymore. Um, I don't think I'm going to pay them money and settle the suits and, you know, apologize and be a better human being. I don't know if that's going to cut it now. He he may be backed into a corner where he has to litigate some of these cases uh, and defend himself. And what does litigate? And he pretty much had to litigate the case and defend himself against uh, the man that's locked up for 75 years who managed to get a default judgment against Diddy. Um, they said Diddy responded to that lawsuit saying all of that is a lie. He don't know who this man. He don't know what he's talking about. But when I um, initially played the court hearing where um, the guy in Michigan got a temporary restraining order against Diddy from selling any property, he said to the judge in open court that Diddy signed into the electric, sit, the electric court system and and went live with him and had like a meeting with him over the court system. So for um, Jason to get a default judgment against Diddy and having a proof that Diddy met with him and said out of his own mouth that he's not going to respond to the lawsuit, then that's enough evidence to say that he had, he had proper notice and that he uh, knowingly and willfully refused to uh, litigate the lawsuit and, all of this can be proved from a jailhouse phone call. I'm like, I know Diddy ain't that stupid, but the man said Diddy went to jail to visit him. Uh -huh, that's what the man said. Diddy logged into the access in the system. Then later on, I found out that same man who said that uh, is the same man who pretty much is in jail for S assault. He's in jail for I know Diddy ain't raping uh, women, men's. Hog time people. They say he's in jail for putting a noose around somebody's neck. Ain't nobody with him. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Thank you guys so much for being here. Greatly appreciate you guys.